Well, routing and switching start somewhere. And certainly one place where we might say it starts is with a conversation around virtual LANs or VLANs. So here's a question for us. What exactly is a VLAN? If somebody stopped you on the street and asked you to define this, maybe they find out you're a network engineer studying for your CCIE, how exactly would you define a VLAN? Well, there are certainly a lot of different ways we could define these, but one of the best ways to talk about VLANs is simply to refer it back to the concept of a broadcast domain. We might remember early on in our CCNA, maybe CCNP study days, where we learned the difference between collision and broadcast domains. A broadcast domain simply indicates that this is the domain for all of our broadcast messaging. Basically, if two hosts exist inside of the same VLAN, it doesn't matter how many switches are in here, it doesn't matter how many hubs for that matter, it doesn't matter how many Ethernet cables, if they're on the same VLAN, if a broadcast message gets sent out by one of these hosts, it will be received by the other host, even if it has to traverse dozens of switches in order to make that communication happen. Now, one other way that we might define VLANs is by binding a subnet to them. We might say that, well, a VLAN is representative of a subnet because in most environments we see a one-to-one -one relationship between a VLAN and a subnet. I create a VLAN like VLAN 10, I create a subnet that goes on that VLAN and life is good. I move on to the next VLAN and subnet combination. But the reality is that there isn't a hard limit or maybe a hard ratio of saying that there's one subnet to one VLAN. In fact, we could have a one to many type of relationship here because a VLAN operates at layer two and a subnet operates at layer three. Basically what we'd be saying at this point is I could have one VLAN, whatever this VLAN ID is, and I could have a bunch of hosts all on maybe one subnet, let's just say 10.1.1.0 slash 24, and then I could have other hosts on here and they're on 192.168 something something. And then I've got other hosts on here that are on a 172.16. something that something. So I could have three different subnets all existing on the same VLAN because again, more accurate than saying that it's, you know, VLAN is a subnet, a VLAN is really again a broadcast domain. And so there's no reason why I couldn't deploy multiple subnets onto a single VLAN. And now there's plenty of reasons for why we shouldn't do that, but there's no reason why I couldn't do that. And we'll explore exactly what that looks like coming up here. Now, something we need to know about Cisco devices and Cisco switches. We have different VLAN ranges on our devices. And this is a little bit historical. It has to do with how Cisco originally made Catalyst products and you know the different VLANs that were at play, as well as the you know, ISL versus 802.1Q trunking, which we'll be talking about in a future skill. But the reality is that as of today, what we need to know is that there are a couple of different VLAN ranges to be aware of. The first VLAN range, which is what we're here to talk about, is the standard VLAN range. The standard range goes from one to 1005. So we might be aware that in 802.1Q, there are 12 bits for our VLAN ID. 12 bits gives us up to 4,096 different values. And so our range of VLANs, we're used to seeing a little bit higher than 1,005. And yet, back in the day, <laughs> many, many years ago, Cisco created a lot of devices that could only go up to VLAN 1005. Now, you might also notice that zero was left out here. That's because zero is reserved, as with a lot of things that <laughs> have zero in them, I suppose. So zero is reserved. One, by the way, this is also a special VLAN known as the default VLAN because every interface, you know, every layer two interface needs to be in a VLAN by default, every VLAN uh, or every interface is going to be configured for VLAN one. And so we have to be careful about that and just make sure we understand that I couldn't, for example, disable VLAN one, I could not use VLAN one, but I'm not actually able to get rid of VLAN one on my devices. 
It's also automatically configured. So again, I don't have to configure VLAN one, it's just always there. And generally speaking, from a security perspective, we do not want to use VLAN one. So in the real world, if we're using VLAN one in our environment, that would be a big security no-no. However, I will say in my experience, it's pretty rare to see an environment that has completely migrated away from VLAN one but it is certainly going to always be a security recommendation if your network is relying on it. Now, the last thing to be aware of in this standard range is that there are four VLANs that, uh, well, four additional VLANs that are reserved. We have zero is a reserved value we just can't use. We have one, which is the default VLAN, but then we also have 1002 through 1005. So we're a little deceptive here because we said our standard range goes up through 1005 and that is absolutely true. But the usable range, <laughs> the usable standard range is actually one to 1001. We can't use zero as we said, and we can't use 1002 to 1005. So why can't we use this? Well, because again, way back in the day, Cisco reserved these four VLANs for FDDI and token ring. These are long defunct layer two protocols that we just are not using in our local area networks. As a result, you might expect that Cisco would have recovered these and just said, you know, they're just part of the standard range now and everybody can use them. But unfortunately, Cisco doesn't always get rid of things that are there for backward compatibility. And so we have to be aware that these exist. If I look at the VLAN database, or the, at least the listing of the VLANs, we're gonna find that these are automatically configured. So they're just already there. I don't have to configure VLAN 1002 or anything like that. I get boot up a switch. It's already going to be configured. It's going to have a name that indicates whether it's for FDDI or token ring, for example, and they cannot be disabled. So I can't get in there and get rid of these VLANs in the same way that I can't get rid of the default VLAN. So this is the standard range of VLANs. Again, in the end, the usable range of VLANs here inside of the standard range would be between one and 1001, where zero is reserved as well as 1002 through 1005. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click here to subscribe to CBT Nuggets and click the notification bell to make sure that you're aware of every time we post new content. If you're interested in a career in IT or you want to brush up on your IT skills, then swing over to our website and while you're there, be sure to sign up for a free trial.